dear Mrs. Farnsworth. It's so lovely to know one in whom one has so much in common. Kindred spirits, so to speak. Like Carol and your charming son. Oh, uh, yes. And now, ladies, I have a most delightful surprise for you. Mr. Mortimer Libby will favor us with a few words on American folk songs. Mr. Libby? My goodness, couldn't be purrier if it was a gas station. Harvey, this is my niece, Sis Hopkins. How do you do, Miss? Howdy, Mr. Harvey. Harvey, you may take Miss Hopkins' luggage up to the front guest room. Very well, sir. Well, how do you like it, sis? Floors are kind of slick, ain't they? Whee! Woo-hoo! Careful, Mr. Harvey, don't you slip. I'm not apt to, miss. See, I told you. <laughs> Did you hurt yourself? I believe not, thank you. You're welcome. Where's Aunt Clara? Oh, I'll go look for her. What a surprise this is going to be. I'm sorry, Claire. I didn't know there was anyone in there. I wonder where she went. Who? What are you talking about? It's a surprise, Claire. I brought my brother's daughter, Sis, home to live with us. You what? You dared to... Now, take it easy, Claire. She's a nice girl. She has no place to live. She... Well, she certainly is not going to meet anyone in this house. Where is she? I left her here just a minute ago. Horace. Hey, Mr. Harvey. Where is Aunt Clara? Mrs. Hopkins is in the drawing room having a soiree. A soiree? Has she got a good doctor? A soiree? That must be awful. My next number is the result of much research and study of the lives and customs of the backwoods mountain people of our country. In this song, everyone joins in the chorus. Will you come with me, my Phyllis, dear, to yon blue mountain free, where blossoms smell the sweetest? Come rove along with me. Everybody, ho! She knew I got home at this hour of the morning. Well, it's the last chance we had to celebrate. Next week this time, we'll be back at school in the same old grind. 
Mm -hmm. Are you coming up on the train with the gang? Oh, I can. I'm driving my own car up. Oh, you're going to miss a lot of fun. We're going to take along our instruments and have a jam session. Oh, gee, I'd love to go with you, Jeff, but I'll need my car at school. Well, I'll see you up there. Okay. I'll come up the door with you. Oh, you needn't bother. I'll sneak you in the back way. See you later. Okay. Sorry, warm, yeah. I'm burning already. Then you don't want no breakfast? No, I don't want no breakfast. You don't want no breakfast? Well, maybe the rest of them will be hungry. years of service. I have never seen anything. Quiet, Stoop. Yes, sir. Sis, we appreciate you getting our breakfast, but see, uh, here in the city, we don't get up so early. Furthermore, we have servants to do a thing. I said quiet. Yes, sir. Shut up. Say, those sausages look mighty good, sis. They are good, Uncle Horace. Try one. We'll have orange juice and coffee upstairs, Harvey. Yes, ma'am. I ain't never seen such to do over a little something to eat in all my life. Well, I'm hungry. How about you folks? The servants do not eat with the family, miss. Why? Don't you like them? And I won't be humiliated before my friends, my servants, by that... that caricature. She's leaving this house, Horace Hopkins, and she's leaving right now. I won't have her here another minute. She's your relative. Do something about it. I'm tired. We'll talk about it later. No, we'll talk about it right here and now. This can't go on. Well, what do you want me to do? Throw her out in the middle of the night? Where's she gonna go? Sure, you'll be relatives of no concern of mine. You brought her here, now get rid of her. Well, I'll do something about it. Uh, just give me time to think. Huh, you think? Really, that's very funny. If you'd known how to think, you never would have brought her here in the first place. Oh, that's the trouble with you, Horace Hopkins, always rushing headlong into things. Oh, oh. Something wrong? Oh, 